I'm Stephen Foskett, organizer of the Tech Field Day events, and the what you're about to watch here is a presentation where uh, Rubrik is going to be presenting to a panel of delegates from around the world. These folks specialize in enterprise IT technology, and they are here to ask questions and discuss and learn about the technology. If you're interested in learning more about this event, you can find out by going to techfieldday.com. And if you enjoyed this video, you can find a lot more at youtube.com slash techfieldday, or just use the Google. Let's go ahead and sign in a rubric. And I've made a couple accounts here. I'm gonna begin this demo by logging on as a super user, and then we'll actually log on with one of my DBA accounts to show you the role-based access controls. And right, we'll, we'll do some fun stuff. So let me log in as my admin. What's my password? I don't remember, it's a bunch of dots. Cool. I'm gonna show you two things realistically here, and then the rest of it's restoring the SQL and the Linux environment. So the first thing is, this is the dashboard. It's pretty straightforward. It's telling you just kind of health, operations, capacity, um, kind of what's going on. Not too much going on here. You can connect to any node in the system uh, because everything's distributed. It's all running HTML5, just loading up in Chrome. Right? So the two things I want to show you that are kind of the overview is making a policy and applying a policy. And this is all running our Firefly code. So I don't know how to tell you no smoke and mirrors. Like the timestamp says November 16th at 3 p.m. So there we go. You know, you know it's, it's legit. Um, so what I'm going to do is go over to the left side here to the SLA domains, which are what we call our policies, service level agreement domain. And out of the box, you get three different domains. We've got a few extras that are here for tests because it's a live environment. And you'll notice that it says local and remote domains. Local domains are policies that I've constructed inside this specific on-premises cluster. right? And then remote domains are any off-premises or off-site cluster that are being replicated into me so that if they fail, I can see exactly what data and applications are being protected and bring them back up. Right? So remote, local, that's what it is. And I've made you a special one here called Tech Field Day because I love all of you so much. We'll open up that particular policy and I'll show you how crazy complex this is. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to edit this one because I don't want to like delete it. Uh, you give it a name. It's the first thing. Technically not the first thing. Like the first real thing is like what's your policy uh, from an RPO perspective and how long do you want to keep the data. So it's our day, monthly, year for taking backups. And these policies apply to anything in the system. Doesn't matter if it's a database, doesn't matter if it's a Linux box, virtual machine. You build policy holistically and then you apply it to objects. So this tech field day policy is something I made very recently. It's taking a backup every four hours, retaining the, hour, the four hour backups for three days. Then it's pruning those down to a daily for 17 days. I just chose some random numbers. Cool. So that's the full grandfather, father, son system. And then I get two other options. Do I want to archive out to something that's not inside the rubric cluster, such as uh, Scality or Cleversafe or AWS or Azure or you know, whatever it is that you think is cool, right? Uh, so what, I can just check that, sorry? What's the requirement for being a target for that? Like, is it just a list of things? These are the ones that we've built integration with or is there some thing? If it's an S3 compatible content store, we can do it. Uh, S3 like is fine. Uh, Blob store is also fine. NFS is fine. Uh, really, <coughs> any kind of object or cloud store, they, they, tend to they tend to speak either S3 compliant, Blob, or you can do NFS. Yeah, so those are, all, those are all good to go. We have a full list of everything that's been tested and has a smiley face next okay, to it. Cool. Yeah. Makes sense. And then I don't have an actual other cluster replicating to this, but if I did, there'd just be another checkbox. Control at the checkbox level is say, yeah, I want to do it. So archive is an example. I'll say, cool, this policy, anything that comes in, archive it out to whatever I've configured. Uh, you can actually choose an archive location as well. I only have one in here. I'm going to uh, Azure as my example here. So I want to go to Azure, and then it's a simple slider bar. How many days do I want to send out of the environment? So I can say, like, after two days, send this stuff into the archive, three days. It's just a tiny policy. There's not a lot of data here, really, to, to send out. And then to be the same for replication. How many days do I want to put in a secondary site so that I can support disaster recovery and bring up services and applications quickly? That's it. Uh, based on the talk that you saw Adam and Roland give, you know, we, we're intelligently figuring out where to put files and where to run services. The, the cluster is very aware of what's going on. I don't feel like there's a real need to expose anything beyond this for the system. All right, you're not in the business of uh, turning nerd knobs for the rest of your life. You just want to set these things up and go. All right, so that's the policy. Questions there so far? What happens if you can't meet the SLA for whatever reason? Now, there's no free lunches, right? I mean, you got to obviously take a look at the system, the size, things like that. Uh, we will warn you in uh, our reporting system that there's capacity challenges upcoming. 
right? So we'll give you runway and days and size. We'll report who your worst virtual machines or databases are from a growth perspective, both in the appliance stack, you know, in the cluster, as well as in your archive locations. So you, there's still there's still an onus on the system administration team to monitor free space and things like that. Uh, but there's a lot of ways that you can control that so that if you were running out of space, you have a lot of different ways that you can assuage that. You could say, keep less data, put more in the archive, or hey, buy some more rubric appliances. That's always a good option. Cool? Did that answer your question? Right. Yep. I love the last answer for that. All right, that's, that's pretty much it. And you can see that I'll, I'm only, only protecting one SQL database with this particular example, because it's part of my demo. It's telling me what's going on, as well as how much data is actually being consumed by this policy. Not very much. Okay. So that's building policy. You know, like, eh, so easy, even a sales guy can do it. Uh, <laughs> They know that I say that. Love you, sales guys. I don't know which camera it is. Uh, and then you apply it to objects, right? So I'll show virtual machines as an example because it's the one that I'm most comfortable with. Uh, so I'm going to switch over actually to uh, like a folders view as an example so I can dig in. This is my vCenter server. Um, that's the actual data center running in Santa Clara. And then from there, I can see all the folders and objects that are within there. Virtual machines, folders, clusters, data centers, tags, whatever you really think is important within the hierarchy. Uh, so I could just take the entire demo folder as an example where all my applications are running. It's telling me there's 147 virtual machines there. I can go to manage protection. It's saying, hey, you need to get some tools on stuff. And hey, you already have some policies elsewhere inside of there. That's fine. I'm not actually going to apply it. And then it gives me the option of what policy do I want to apply to the folder level. And what that's going to do is actually all the child objects that re recursively lives within that folder will acquire that policy and uh, start being protected with whatever that policy dictates. Right, so it's, it's auto-protecting everything below that point. If you desire to cut that off at some point, like you want it to go two tiers down but no further, you can block inheritance, kind of like if you've done GPOs uh, for AD, similar kind of construct, as well as you can assign policy directly to an object so that if a virtual machine had a gold policy that lived in this folder, but I've got the folder levels bronze, the virtual machine's gold assignment would supersede that. So the more granular the policy, uh, the more control it has within the hierarchy. Does that make sense? Cool. And this applies at pretty much any layer. So if I were to go to SQL Server databases, uh, I can go into my P Windows 01 box here. This is the physical bare metal Windows server running in my environment. This is the Microsoft SQL instance that's running on that Windows box. And then from within there, I can see all the databases that are running within that instance. And I can apply policy at any one of those layers. Right? And it's the same kind of construct. If I were to go back up to the instance, I can say, just protect everything in this instance. Maybe, you know, this is the default Microsoft SQL Server instance, but typically instance controls like an environment level, such as prod, pre-prod stage, QA, whatever that might be. I could say, keep prod protected at gold, but the rest at bronze or something like that. You you mentioned tags. Are those vSphere tags or something native to root? vSphere tags, <clears throat> yeah. What about in the case of physical servers? Is there any way to tag them to like build a policy based on that? I mean, you can you can... Through the API, there's a lot of flexibility. So you could go based off like a regular expression, just the string itself. You can group them in various ways. Um, there's no specific like rubric tag constraint, but there's a lot of metadata surrounding the workloads, and you can leverage any one of those. Okay. Yeah. But I think the vSphere tags is a pretty common request from customers to be able to tag it there. And I've got a demo online on our YouTube channel showing that. That's pretty much it. The last one is Linux host. Kenny's going to go a lot deeper into this, but I'll just showcase that these are the bare metal servers running Linux uh, operating systems, most of the popular variants. What we've done here is we actually protect uh, what's called a file set. So you can actually dictate a path within the Linux environment, such as we have one here that's slash Etsy. You can apply the file set to a physical host and then associate a policy with the file set. So you could have multiple file sets attached to one physical host with different policies at each one. Right? So what the, I think the goal here is just to show that really anything you can think of at any level in the hierarchy is controllable by policy. And it just picks that up and any changes that it sees uh, automatically get acquired and protected. Cool. That's pretty much it. I mean, with those, with those two things, like, it's typically one hour, start to finish, you're up, you're taking backups, and you're like, what do I do now? Um, these are our primary lab environments at Rubrik. Um, I'm somewhat responsible for them, and I think I've set policy about six or seven months ago and haven't really looked at it, even though we have hundreds of employees around the world using them on a day-by-day -day basis. So the policies are pretty powerful. And that's the goal. You don't really want to be in this thing besides doing restores at any reasonable frequency, unless you just really like backup software a lot, which I don't. <laughs>